If you were forced to play in a death game where the world's deadliest assassins would fight to the death in exchange for a chance to win the $10 million prize for the last one standing, would you know how to survive? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the 2009 movie, The Tournament, and seeing if any of the characters could have made better decisions to ultimately survive and maybe even win this death royale. Our movie begins in some sort of meat packing plant where we can see the ground has been littered with blood, bodies, and bullets. Here, a black dude named Joshua Harlow is seen running away from something, and he hides behind a wall. And unfortunately, his revolver is all out of bullets. Joshua pulls out some sort of primitive tracker, which reveals a blip, and he looks to his right and see that his friend has been mortally wounded. However, before Joshua can help him, the final contestant appears with a full automatic machine gun and starts firing shots. Joshua makes his first mistake by choosing to hide behind a wall thinner than this guy's neck, where bullets in the real world would just fly through and kill you. He definitely could have chosen a much thicker wall to hide behind, or at least lied down on the floor to reduce the odds a penetrating bullet would hit him. The other assassin also isn't much smarter. He literally notices that Joshua's Are you out of bullets? and he still decides to waste all his own bullets randomly shooting a wall. This gives Joshua the time to activate the nearby meat racks, allowing him cover to escape to another wall. Here he sees another weapon that he can use to beat the last contestant and sets up a trap, disguising a piece of meat as himself so the other assassin wastes all his bullets. Here, Joshua is able to take advantage that the other assassin has no more bullets and slides through a pool of blood to the nearby gun, where he's able to blow the other assassin's head off as he's reloading. A victorious Joshua then walks to his friend and allows him to have one last smoke before executing him at point blank range. We then see a series of cameras pan out, showing Joshua to be the final player. In front of him, there's a pile of cash that he can claim for being the last assassin standing. And we can see that this event is being broadcasted to rich elites around the world. Our movie then shifts to the modern day United Kingdom, where we see a lady step out of the subway and enter a hotel room. Here she sees a suitcase addressed to her, and inside there are two pistols and a mystery fluid that says take at 9pm. And if you haven't already figured it out, she's one of the assassins that will be entering in this year's tournament. So after taking a shower, she looks at the clock and drinks the fluid, which causes her to immediately become drowsy and pass out on her bed. She soon awakes to some surgeons above her performing an operation, however she's unable to do anything and they continue to operate. Before we can see what happens to our female assassin, the movie brings us to a local bar, where we see an extremely drunk man is woken up by the bar owner and throws up on his shoes, so he's promptly kicked out from the bar. But keep this guy in mind because he's actually pretty important later in the movie. We can see that the tournament is about to begin because the CCTV footage around the entire city starts getting hacked and broadcasted to the rich elites. These guys will be betting on who will be the last one standing in this year's tournament. There's even betting odds on every assassin. However, the only one that stands out is last year's winner, Joshua Harlow, who's not here for prize money, but for revenge, since one of the other assassin contestants murdered his wife. We then cut back to our female assassin named Lilai, who has just woken up from surgery. On a nearby table, she sees a familiar tracking device that can be used to find the other assassins, as well as a scar on her stomach, showing where her tracker has been implanted. Before she can process what happened, she notices her tracker says there's another assassin outside of the door. And for some reason, she decides to walk up to the door and ask who it is. And then she makes the dumbass decision of opening the door for the person who claims he's there for room service. I'm no Albert Einstein, but I'm pretty sure Albert Einstein's left nuts could have figured out that that person was probably another assassin looking to kill you and not someone there to deliver your pancakes. Luckily, Lila is pretty elusive and is able to escape the throat chain by jumping over a wall and then slicing the other assassin's fingers off and finishes him with a shot to the dome. But this gets me wondering, if it could slice his fingers off so easily, why didn't it slice through her neck at all? Yeah, Lilai definitely got lucky here. What I would have done is jumped out the nearby window and ran away. In a tournament like this, you only get a prize for being the last one standing, and you don't get jack shit for fighting another person. So there's no point in risking it and potentially dying. We then move across the city, where we see one assassin following another, and using his tracker, he could see that he entered a nearby store. Inside the store, the black assassin goes to the bathroom and removes his tracker using a knife, tossing it into a nearby coffee jar. Here he sits down and waits for another customer to consume the coffee. And would you know, the priest from earlier does just that. I'm not exactly sure how he managed to swallow the bullet sized thing down his throat unnoticed, but I digress. 
Personally, I think the black guy's idea of removing his own tracker is a great idea, because there's no rules in this game, so there's no rule against removing your own tracker. And the enemies not being able to track you and find your location means you can literally just hide out until all the assassins die off and then 1v1 the last person, and they won't even know where you're coming from. When the drunk priest exits the breakfast diner, the assassin watching the black dude earlier now targets him instead, since the tracker says that he's the black assassin. My only question is, how did he not realize the assassin he was tracking earlier turned from someone who looked like Black Panther to your local meth addict? And furthermore, he follows the priest with his shotgun out. But for some reason, he takes long as fuck to aim the shotgun at point blank range. Like dude, you really don't have to be that accurate, he isn't even looking at you. This is an issue a lot of the assassins face throughout this movie, so if you are in this situation, make sure to just fucking kill the person just walking in front of you. Because if you don't, you'll end up like the guy in the car. He takes so long to aim that a nearby assassin with a sniper rifle notices him and shoots him before he can even get the kill, saving the priest. The lady with the sniper rifle also attempts to kill the priest, but takes way too long because she's scared to kill an innocent person. Because of this, the black guy who has his tracker removed jumps from rooftop to rooftop, finds her, and snaps her neck. The only way I could think of that she could survive is if she sets up her sniper rifle inside her room and shoots out a window, instead of on a rooftop where she could be easily ambushed. Later in the movie, the priest who still has no fucking idea what's happening heads to his local church, where he prays to God to cure his alcoholism. Frankly, I think he should have headed to the local rehab center instead. Unfortunately for the priest, we could see that he's being tailed by a mean looking Russian assassin, and Russian assassins in movies are usually pretty fucking strong. Inside the church, the priest is caught by Lilai, who is visibly confused when the priest isn't fighting back, and she has a soft heart and decides to let the priest live. Well, I think this is a terrible mistake, because what if the priest was just another assassin pretending to act clueless because he had been caught? I would just quickly shoot him in the head and not take any risks. Before she can do anything, the pair is attacked by the Russian dude, who happens to be wielding some of the shittiest grenades known to man. Like, geez, those are even weaker than your dad's pullout game. The fight continues with Lilai being pinned down by the Russian guy into a tub of water, and she's slowly being drowned. Luckily, the priest is able to save her just in time by acting as a bit of a distraction. So Lilai pulls the Russian dude's shitty grenade pin and blows him up right then and there. But for some reason after this, Lilai decides she doesn't want to kill the priest and instead wants to protect him. Obviously, this is a shitty move once again, because you don't get anything for protecting this priest other than lowering your odds of winning the game. We then move across the city, where we see another contestant named Miles Sanders who's a Texan psychopath intent on killing all of those around him. We can see how fucking crazy he is when he decides to randomly kill this cute dog. Miles decides to go to the Angel's strip club. Inside, his tracker shows that there's more than 7 assassins inside, but no one inside wants to throw the first shot, since they want to stay hidden and wait for others to shoot first. Which is honestly a great idea, because if you shoot first, someone hidden will just shoot you in the back. While receiving a lap dance from a stripper, Miles notices a man who entered the strip club is armed with a gun, so he decides to take the first shot and kills him, igniting a bloodbath. Shots ring out throughout the bar as multiple assassins engage in combat, however no one really dies and everyone's just hidden behind cover, until Joshua Harlow shows up. He decided to take things into his own hands and starts dispatching assassins left and right, until it's just him and Miles left. Since Miles has a hostage, Joshua is reluctant to take the shot. As a result, an assassin disguised as a stripper stabs him in the back, and Miles shoots him, causing him to black out and wake up attached to a pole. Here, Miles taunts Joshua and reveals the person who actually killed his wife, Lai Lai Zan. He decides to let Joshua have one last sip of alcohol. However, he does not expect Joshua to spit it into his face as he lights a cigarette, allowing Joshua time to escape. Miles is then forced to escape into a nearby vent before Joshua can finish him. We then visit Lilai and the priest who go to a nearby gas station for gas. As Lilai goes inside, the useless priest runs into Miles, who threatens to kill him but takes way too long, allowing the priest the chance to escape into the gas station where Lilai fights and downs him. However, the priest urges Lilai not to kill him for Don't do it! which forces the game director to detonate the bomb, blowing him up instantly just like Johnnyson's dick after a porn shoot. <laughs> The movie then moves to another fight scene, where Joshua Harlow and the black guy that removed his chip earlier both find Lilai Zan and the priest, and all four of them engage in combat. The fight is pretty interesting as it takes place between two vehicles, but I can say is it ends in the black guy who removed his chip earlier getting squished to death between two cars, and Joshua Harlow seemingly getting blown up as he was driving the oil tanker. 
But all I can say is, what a shitty choice of car. All it takes is one stray explosive device or bullet, and your entire car can just blow you up before you get a chance to fight anyone. However, it turns out Joshua Harlow has a massive cock and survives his oil tanker exploding. Don't ask me how that happened. He tracks down Lilai to the church and asks her why she killed his wife. And it's revealed that the game maker was the one that forced her to do it, since he wanted Joshua to return to the game, and it was impossible if he had a wife. Filled with rage, Joshua stabs her anyways, and he is declared the winner. A victorious Joshua then enters the game room, the same one he was in years prior, except this time he isn't happy as he pours out his drink. In a big twist, instead of stabbing Lilai, he actually took out her tracker trip and forces it into the game maker's mouth, and holding it there until the bomb activates, killing them both. I think an alternative idea he could have done is just killed Lilai and then bring a gun to the studio and kill everyone. We can see that literally none of the guards are armed with weapons. Or even better, you could suicide bomb everyone there, because fuck rich people for putting you in a game like this anyways. But yeah, the movie ends with Lilai joining the priest sermon as he overcomes his alcohol addiction through a very interesting form of rehab, and then she disappears. Or the easiest way you could have won this game is you just steal a nuke from the US government and just nuke the shit out of the other assassins. Hope you all enjoyed this video, I know it might not be as interesting as my previous how to beat videos, but I'm still trying to get in the flow of things since I did take quite a long break. But yeah, I do have a new video coming, it's probably be on the new Squid Game, so if you do enjoy that show, make sure to subscribe so you can catch that video. Otherwise, if you have any interesting other movie recommendations, feel free to comment that. But other than that, make sure to subscribe and have a great rest of your day.